the Buddha lists four qualities that are useful for people to develop so they can get along with one another. And they're also useful inside. The first quality is generosity. When you're dealing with other people, you're generous with your things, you're generous with your forgiveness. You're generous in your judgments of them. The second quality is kind words. When you have to criticize someone, do it in a way that shows respect. This means finding the right time, the right place. So you're not doing it in front of a lot of other people. And so they'll be more and more willing to want to hear or be willing to hear what you have to say. Try to find the way to say it that shows respect is one of the worst things you can do in any relationship either in the family or outside the family, is to show disrespect. The third quality is genuine help. When you're helping somebody else, make sure that you're not just going through the motions and you're not just trying to score points. You're actually thinking, actively thinking about what does this person need, what would be useful for this person to know or to have, and see if you can provide it. And then the fourth quality is consistency. This is translated in lots of different ways. One way is that you try to be consistent in your help. Another way is that you try to be, act consistently with, in line with the, the role that that other person has toward you. In other words, if someone is your mother, you behave consistently toward that person as a mother. Don't try to erase your status. And same with other people who have special relationships to you. In the same way inside. You have to be generous with your mind. Try to treat it with kind words when you're scolding it, when you're pointing out its errors to it. Try to do it in a way that it's going to be willing to listen. And then make sure that your criticism really is helpful. And as for the, the mother inside, the John Lee says that's mindfulness. So mindfulness is the, the mother of all the other good qualities inside. You keep something in mind, and then you notice what happens when you act on it. This was, of course, where we involved discernment and virtue and all the other factors of the path. But behave consistently toward yourself as a meditator. Make sure that your mind stays in the right place as you go through the day. It's not that you're a meditator only when you're sitting here with your eyes closed. You're a meditator all through the day. So treat yourself in line with the, your status as a meditator. Be responsible in how you look at things and listen to things. Be responsible in what you say. All your regular activities. Try to bring them into the practice. We're often talking about bringing the practice into daily life, but all too often that what happens there is that daily life is about like a cement sidewalk, and the little tiny cracks here and there, and maybe a little tiny flower will grow, a little plant will grow. But daily life doesn't offer much room. But if you switch your priorities, think of practice as the context, then you try to fit daily life in there, and things that don't fit in with the practice, then you can just drop them. You find that the practice has a chance to grow big and strong.